So the next few things, these are going to be mostly user specific. Uh, I have my own thoughts on some of this stuff, but it's really kind of however you want it to be. I personally prefer a very vanilla nuke build, you know, and that includes tweaking the UI and making other changes. So documentation, this is in our previous one where we talked about help docs. If you download the HTML package, this is where you would reference that. File handling, if you have some sort of non-standard image sequences, you might want to make a change here. Otherwise, I like to just leave that alone. Same with nodes. So my personal preference is to actually have merge nodes connect on the B input. I also prefer to have roto shapes not auto key. I want to manually click the key button when I'm doing the roto because most of my shapes don't require animation and I don't like having to delete keyframes after the fact. You can also modify some of the tab search menu options here. So waiting and favorites, those are fairly new features. Those can be really helpful, or if you prefer it more of the traditional Nuke experience, you can change, you can turn those off. OFX, that's just for running in trial mode. Startup, this actually lets you set what your default UI setting is. So if you built your own custom one, you can set that up here. Show the splash screen, that's exactly what it sounds like. This is if you decide that you do want to submit usage statistics or you want to stop, you can actually change that setting here. UI scaling, this is new to this version of Nuke. If you're running a high DPI monitor or something really high res and you want to change how the interface handles, you can turn this to all or per display and actually scale your display, your all your icons and everything accordingly. Next up, we're gonna talk about panels. So appearance, again, this is very much just user specific. I've found that some systems, I might actually change the font here to make it more legible. Um, but otherwise, I really leave this stuff alone because if I'm moving from machine to machine, I want everything to be the same and feel the same. So I typically don't mess with my appearance very much. Control panels, so I actually like to turn these on. This allows them to expand and collapse automatically. By default, they stay open once you click them open until you clear them out. I see a lot of people get around that by shrinking this number to one or two. Um, I find that if you turn an expanding collapse on, that allows you to keep a lot of tools loaded, but they stay collapsed until you click the node. Another really personal preference one, but I actually prefer a floating color picker. Uh, I like the granularity that comes with that. But if you prefer an in-panel color picker, this is where you would make that change. And I would say play with that and see which one you prefer. File browser, this just starts from the last used place. Node colors, again, very user specific. I see some people go and make big changes on these. I leave them how they are. Node graph, same deal. Almost all of this is very much user specific. There are a couple things I change. I like to bump the size of my dots up slightly because I use dots as an organizational tool. I also like to change the postage stamp mode. So one thing to know, when Nuke's generating a postage stamp, it's actually processing the comp just at a very small res, like in proxy mode. But if you have a very complicated script and you're using postage stamps, it's having to do real work and IO to actually draw that postage stamp. So I always like to set this to static frame and I find that that helps performance a little bit. I also like auto label and highlight running operators. This shows you exactly what's processing in that moment. So you'll see the nodes and the pipes lighting up as it goes. If you like snap to grid, you can do all of that here. You can also change arrow lengths and arrow sizes as well as colors. Occasionally, if I'm working in really complicated stuff, I like to have all of my arrows flow one direction. And if I'm worried about arrows that are flowing a different direction, you can actually change the color of that arrow based on its vector, which can actually be really helpful for seeing sort of gotcha parts of a script. Next up, we have scopes. That's just changes some simple settings there. Script editor, if you're doing a lot of Python stuff, you might want to change your indent or some of the other settings here. Viewer, we covered this a little bit previously. But this is where you would set your bit depth for your viewer. You can also change some of the default behaviors for how viewers work and your GPU settings. I like to utilize my GPU whenever I can. Flipbook, you can set some of your basic settings here. Monitor out. If you're using SDI out, you can change your legal range. Viewer handles. Again, I don't typically change anything here. There are occasions if I'm working in a lot of heavy, heavy roto jobs, I'll turn on draw shadow for my splines 
that can make them a little more legible, although it, it muddies the water a little bit in terms of what you're doing. Uh, the other thing, if you come from a different suite with 3D uh, navigation tools, you can change that to one of your preferred methods. I like to leave it default, um, but again, I, I want Nuke to be as vanilla as it possibly can be. You can also change your handle sizes, and I do occasionally change these, especially in 3D space. I find the handle sizes can be a little bit small and tedious to work with. You can also change your your interaction speed. So this would be how fast you orbit or how fast something tumbles. So there are a lot of times if I'm doing very fine toothed work in 3D space, I'll slide my interaction speed down a little bit so I have a little more granular control over what's happening. So that's basically our preferences. I'm gonna show you one more thing and that is basically where these preferences live. So you know, one of the nice things is Nuke saves these out as an XML file. You can then port them to other machines if you're moving from place to place. You know, and that goes for your workspaces as well as for your preferences themselves. So we'll hit save. We'll go to our PC and if you're on Windows, this is how you'll do it. You'll go to your user folder. If you're on Mac or Linux, you still need to go to your, your user folder that's running. And then on Mac and Linux, those will show up as hidden folders and Windows, they just show up in the file browser directly, but it's a .nuke folder. And inside that .nuke folder, and this is generated the first time you run nuke, it'll create a workspace folder. And you can see it's, I've deleted my workspace here, but say we wanna save a workspace. You can see it saved it to that folder. So we'll jump back in there. So now you can see we've saved that workspace. So you can now bring that with you if you're moving to other workstations or other shops. Uh, similarly, there's a preference file here. It saves it as a nuke script. You can actually open it with a text editor and see what's going on in there a little bit. And then some of these are just system files that nuke uses to maintain its you know, UI state or other changes uh, from session to session. One thing I'll also show you, so you can modify nuke's preferences via python and you can use this is my actual dot nuke folder and so you can use python files to actually link out and show other things i'm not going to go into great detail i'm just going to show you that this is kind of how they work so this is a case where i have a network share and i'm actually having nuke point toward to that network share and then it's using preference files that live there in my case i run windows and linux as a daily workstation setup and this way I only have to maintain one set of preferences and files for you know, my, my deployment. And they both work Windows or Linux. All right, and that sums up preferences.